So I think you have to be, first and foremost, be true to yourself, even if it means you only have 400 followers. It's very important for you to do marketing the art of getting known. And so as an artist now, we can no longer rely on other entities, agents, salespeople to get us work. We have to take some of that as our own responsibility and to get our name and our work out there and to build a connection with an audience and potential clients. The Bold event was the first time the future had collaborated with Art Center. And the Bold Symposium historically has been about where the intersection exists between entrepreneurs and creatives. So we really wanted to design something a little bit different to try out a new format, a single day, full length workshop with a featured artist speaker. This is an important moment because this is homecoming for me. I'm an Art Center alum and I've been very involved in Art Center ever since graduating. I taught there for over 15 years and I've spoken at all three of the previous creative symposiums. The first bit of thing that I want to talk about is customers versus audience. So every brand, every company, every organization has customers. Customers, you sell an idea, you sell a thing, you sell a service to. There's a transaction that happens. They pay you for services rendered. And once the exchange is complete, that's the end of the transaction. That makes a lot of sense. And an audience is far superior, much greater than customers. And I'll tell you why. Because an audience will show up happily to consume everything it is that you make and do, and they'll support you, and they'll share, and you don't even need to ask them. And if you guys want a sustainable lifestyle business where you're making six figures, $100,000, all you need is 1,000 true fans or an audience. A true fan is somebody who will drive or fly 200 miles just to see you speak. And so what we want to do is to build an audience of true fans. A true fan can be a client, a client who, despite your inexperience or your following, will just hire you sight unseen, will always give you the best opportunities that will treat you with respect and never haggle you over price. And that's what you want. Yvette Roman is one of the co-founders of the Bold Symposium. She's an Arts Center alum who graduated with a degree in photography. And her story is quite interesting in that she literally lost what was potentially the biggest job of her career because after having this dialogue with the client, they had changed their mind once they found out her social following wasn't big enough. And to be very realistic, this is value to add that artists bring to any particular project, that they have a high profile, that they're well known. And she doesn't blame them for that. But I think this was a great way for a lot of creatives to wake up to the reality, you have to play the social game if you want to be relevant. Trying to fight the internet is a losing game. It really is. And in Gary Vaynerchuk's word, the internet won, get over it and get yours. Really, that's it. So it's like you are swimming against the tide and eventually you'll tire and you'll lose and you'll drown. This is nothing new. Instagram is new, but the quest to become relevant yeah. is not new. And also the quest to, um, for companies, large companies that have good budgets to seek icons to shoot or to create content with them as partners is nothing new. Irving Penn shot for Clinique and Clinique couldn't afford anybody, and a lot of people could have done beautiful work. Okay, not that beautiful, but of course, they could have done a rad, rad job. But they also had the overlay of Irving Penn shoots for us, or Vanity Fair, Annie Leibovitz, Mark Seliger. They're icon shooting icons for an iconic brand. It all works, right? I probably would be able to shoot a lot of the content for Vanity Fair, no problem. And a lot of you guys could, right? But I'm not an icon, so I wouldn't even be considered for that job. That's been going on forever. So, you know, it's just a media platform. Yeah. It's different. Bonnie Sang has an incredible story in that she's an art school dropout, a self-taught photographer who's been able to work with some really high profile clients because of her social following. She has millions of followers on Pinterest and close to 100,000 followers on Instagram. And people connect to her story as a working mom who has two kids, who's a creative person, who lives a very stylish and tasteful life. They want that person, and she stands for female empowerment. When we talk about audiences slash client, potential clients, who do you want to work with? So age group, you have to identify which age group because 
you like what Chris said, you can please to everyone. You have to figure out who you want to work with. For me, I love working with a group of moms. So probably 30 to 65 in that range, they're more mature, they already have a family. And then what kind of job they're in. So as you saw earlier, I wanted to focus on architecture, fashion. So the job that my ideal client would be magazine editor, creative directors, and then what kind of lifestyle does this person have? You just really imagine. Go crazy. It doesn't, this person might not exist, which is fine. The exercise is for you to know what kind of content to create, who you're speaking to. A couple of key takeaways from Bonnie's workshop. One was some really neat workarounds with just using something like this, your smartphone, and using a couple apps. Pretty much it's like a desktop workstation in the palm of your hand, so you don't really have any more excuses not to create work and share work with the world. The other thing I learned from her is the insane amount of detail that she puts into curating her feed so that everything lines up in a beautiful way and it's unfolding in time. You see how as we scroll down, there's like light, bright, colorful pictures. I noticed you maybe going dark, <laughs> a little dark. I don't know if it's a mood thing or, or like at that moment you're like, oh, I love these pictures and you keep posting them. Um, but the thing is, when there's a new follower, they come in, they want to check you out. It's almost like a resume. It's almost like your website, your portfolio. So you want to really catch them, not just by pictures, but they just really look at your feed. So this is your first impression. So this is my current feed, right? Now to think about my next picture, I just put in three. But what I do is down here, there's this zigzag thing. You tap that, and now I can see what the next one will look like. Okay, so you really shift So I just do one at a time, yeah. An example here is, there's already a human, which is me, and if I post my daughter, there's me again. This is not a good grid, just to quickly show an example. So I would keep looking for something that match this sky here, that's a really clean, minimal, and no human. So that's my thought process. The idea that you create work to market and to sell to other people online is an old fashioned idea, one that's been borrowed from advertising. What's more important is for you to build an audience, to send a message out to them, to put you into your story. Nobody can copy you. And that's a key takeaway that you should apply to what you're doing right now. You are an attractive character, an attractive brand. You have to have four components, right? You have to have like an interesting backstory. You have to be, have character flaws. That's the vulnerability part, the authenticity. You have to have parables, stories that you tell to help people understand the world. And the last one, the one that's hardest for people to get a grasp on is, you have to be willing to be polarizing. Uh, now some people might misinterpret the, the last message of being willing to be polarizing the people. What I really mean by that, and, and the true intent of that is like, you have to take a position on an issue or a stance. You can't be for everybody because then you're for nobody. In the case of Bonnie Sang, she was at a point in her life, a single mom, her husband had left her and trying to raise her daughter in the right way. And so now she's for somebody, she's for the group of women who are either trying to raise a small person or thinking about raising somebody in a family and trying to live a creative life. You can instantly see that she stands for something.